Well, praise the Lord. Glad to be back with you again this week as we continue our study in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5 is where we're at. Uh, and uh, just want to encourage you, if you're watching these, you're encouraged by them. Uh, forward them on to your friends or family. Uh, uh, let me know you're watching. Let me know you're blessed by them. Or if you have any prayer requests, you can uh, email me at mace, M-A-C-E, Wilkerson, W-I-L-K-E-R-S-O-N, at AOL.com. Uh, or you can message me at Facebook or uh, just let me know. But uh, before we get started here, let's pray. Lord, I just ask in the name of Jesus for your anointing as I teach your word today. Anoint me to speak and preach what you want taught and preached. I ask that you anoint the hearer to uh, hear what you want them to receive, a rhema word from you, a God-breathed word. Lord, we also uh, today uh, ask that you bless Israel as they are under attack from their enemy. Give them victory, Lord, we pray for peace of Jerusalem, as your word says to do. And in all that we do, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, turn to Romans chapter 5. Uh, we're going to start in verse 12. Again, I encourage you, uh, if you uh, have a notebook, pen, get it out and take some notes. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Let's talk about Adam. When Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, because he was really the father of mankind, his seed produced all man that came after him. Sin has been passed down from generation to generation to generation, but it all started with Adam. Verse 13, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who was a type of him who was to come. What does that mean, he was a type of him who was to come? I'm talking about Jesus. Adam, like Jesus, was born from God. He had no sin. He had the capability to sin, but he was born without sin. He had the choice to follow God, obey God, and as a result, have a relationship father to son for all of eternity. Adam was created not to die. He was created to live. All his needs were met in the Garden of Eden. God was his provider. Well, Jesus Christ, as we know, was born without sin. Unlike Adam, he lived a perfect sinless life. Sin came through Adam, and thus, as a result, death has come to mankind. Redemption came through Jesus Christ, and as a result of faith in his finished work at the cross, eternal life is available to all of mankind. Verse 15, but the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Notice it is a free gift. You cannot earn salvation. You cannot buy it. You can't work for it. You can't get it by belonging to a certain church or denomination. You can't get it by being extra good Monday through Friday and Sundays too. You can't get it by doing good works. You can't get it by walking an old lady across the street. You can't get it by not drinking, smoking, not doing drugs, which you shouldn't do, but that's not going to get you salvation. Salvation comes through one man, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way to eternal life. And by eternal life, I mean life with God forever and ever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 16. 
And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift, again, notice free gift, which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace. I like that word abundance. That means an oversupply. An abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Let's focus on that scripture. We already talked about through Adam because of what Adam did. did. Sin reigned and as a result, death has reigned ever since. But Jesus Christ, through faith in his finished work at the cross, grace, God's favor, that's what grace is, God's unmerited favor, an abundance of grace is available to every single believer. You don't have to ask for grace. You don't have to plead for grace. It is yours through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you can every day have this confession. I have God's abundant supply of unmerited favor in my life. Think about that. Just think on that statement. God's unmerited favor in abundant supply is available to every believer, and we tap into that through faith, faith in the finished work of Christ. When I say available, that means you have to receive it by faith. Otherwise, you if you don't receive it by faith, you're not going to get it. It only comes through faith. That means you have an abundant supply of grace for your marriage. That means you have an abundant supply of grace for your for your job, an abundant supply of grace for your children on being a good parent, an abundant supply of grace in every single area of life because God is Lord of your life through Jesus Christ. Isn't that good news? And that's why the last part of this verse says, will reign in life through one, Jesus Christ. Reign in life. Not in life after death, but reign in life now. Jesus did not die and go through what he went through so we would be whipped little puppy dogs on planet Earth. No, 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 friend. He wants you and I to reign in life over every circumstance, over every demon, over every opposition. Reign in life now through Jesus Christ. Say it. I reign in life now through Jesus Christ. Say it again. I reign in life now through Jesus Christ. You were meant to reign in life, not be defeated, not be whipped, but to be victorious, victorious over the devil, victorious over the flesh, victorious over this world system. It doesn't matter what kind of education you have. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks you were born on. Through Jesus Christ, you reign in life. That is good news. You can be the poorest of, raise the poorest of the poor, but reign in life through Jesus Christ. He will put you over. He will give you prosperity that the world cannot give. He will give you an abundant supply so you can be a blessing to the church, and to those in need, and to every good work. Hallelujah. Reign in life. I want you to catch that. I want you to know that you were called to reign in life. In life now. Boy, I can't get off that. In life now. You are to reign in life now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So receive that. Somebody out there watching this, this is for you. Receive that. You don't have to be whooped anymore, glory to God. 
Verse 18, Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift, there that is again, free gift comes to all men, resulting in justification of life. Free gift. The Holy Spirit, through the great Apostle Paul, is emphasizing over and over here, it is a free gift. Quit trying to wear yourself out by trying to earn this gift. You and I will never do anything to where we can earn this free gift from God. That's why God in his great mercy and love for you and I has given us this free gift through his son, Jesus Christ. And all you and I have to do is obtain it by faith. We receive it by faith. It is a free gift. All oh, too many are worrying themselves out, worried, frustrated because they know they can't earn it, but they feel they need to. No, that is the devil just trying to put you in an early grave. The gift is yours. It's yours by faith. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, when Christmas or my birthday comes along and somebody puts a present right in front of me, I don't have to jump through hoops to get that present. I just open it up and enjoy what it is. Well, God has given you a gift, a gift of life, a gift of the new covenant, all the benefits that come through the shed blood of Jesus Christ is yours, and all you have to do is open it up by faith and enjoy it. God wants you to enjoy what his son has paid for with his blood. Hallelujah. Verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Again, talking about the cross because Jesus went to the cross for your unrighteousness. He exchanged his righteousness for your unrighteousness. So you could be called righteous. That means you're able to stand before God without fear because you are now the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Verse 20, moreover, the law entered that the offense might, be, might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, righteousness reigns in our life. And because we are now righteous, we can stand before God. And because we can stand before God, not as a sinner, but as a blood-bought child of God, his grace overcomes us. His grace overtakes us. And because his grace, again, his unmerited favor is all over us, dripping from our head down to our toes, we reign in life. Because how can you not reign in life when the creator of the universe has granted his favor in abundance to you in your life. Hallelujah. And it's all made possible because of what Jesus did at the cross. Hallelujah. Great. So here's what I want you to get out of this. This is going to be a short one this week. It's a free gift. You cannot earn salvation. You cannot earn the benefits of the new covenant. It's a free gift paid for by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus loves you and God the Father loves you. Hallelujah. And because of your faith, which is all it takes, because of your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, because of what he did at Calvary's cross, because of your faith in that, you receive an abundant supply of God's unmerited favor. And as a result of that, you reign in life. You reign in life, this life right now, today. You reign over drugs. I sure don't feel like it. By faith, 
you reign over drugs. It doesn't matter what your body feels like. You're not, you're not, uh, your body is not your Lord. The word, the, the, the Lord is your Lord. God Almighty is your Lord and he has given you his word. He stands in back of his word and his word says you are righteous and you reign in life as a king. You reign in life as a king. You reign over drugs, alcohol, gluttony, fear, depression, on and on it goes. You reign through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is good news. Praise the Lord. You reign because he reigns. Hallelujah. And you're in his family. You're royalty. You're royalty. You're royalty. You're royalty. You're royalty in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, maybe you're watching this and you say, Mace, I can't say, I can't say that about me. I'm lost and undone. I know I'm not right with God. Well, friend, now is the chance for you to get right with God. Romans 10, 9 says, all you have to do is believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead and confess him with your mouth that he is Lord and you shall be saved. Simple as that. Simple as that. So I want you to say this prayer with me. Mean it from the bottom of your heart. Say it out loud. What the heart man believes and what the tongue confession is made unto salvation. So say this, say, say, dear Lord, I come to you a sinner, but I don't want to be a sinner anymore. I want to be saved. Come on, say it out loud. Say, I believe Jesus died and rose from the dead. I confess Jesus is my Lord. Devil, get out of my life. You have no place in my life anymore. I'm now God's child. I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm justified. I'm sanctified. I'm a new creature in Christ. I am born again. Father, I thank you for making me your son or daughter. In Jesus' name. Friend, if you said that prayer for the very first time, welcome to the family of God. If you don't have a good Bible-believing church, I encourage you to ask the Lord to show you a good Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church, a church that is going to focus on the Word and the Spirit at the same time working together. Hallelujah. If you live in the Houston area and you don't have a good church home, I I go to, I attend a Glorious Way Church off Champions Forest out by the Willowbrook Mall, pastored by John Greiner. Uh, you can go to gwc.cc. That's their website. It's very informative. Uh, or if you need help finding a church, email me. I'll be glad to do what I can to help you find a good church home. Every believer has a pastor. And you need to be sitting under your pastor, getting fed the word of God, so you can have a victorious life and minister to others. Hallelujah. The pastor's job is to feed the sheep so the sheep can feed other sheep. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, read your Bible every day. Get your Bible out. Read it, especially the New Testament, because that was written to believers, uh, starting with the book of Romans, the epistles, or letters specifically to the believers. I encourage you to read your Bible, feed your spirit every day. Well, friend, I love you. I hope to hear from you. But if I don't see you around town, I'll see you in heaven.